had this dream last night that my testicles were actually saying things to me. <laughs> Stuff like, the country is coming out of recession. <laughs> and Bad Boys Inc. are quite a good band. <laughs> I said, you're talking bollocks. <laughs> Which means that my genitals have just been simmering all night. So now, great, I can look forward to a whole day swollen and sodden with lust. OK, I'm in the bank. I'm doused in the cool, air-conditioned atmosphere. I can think straight now. Do you want it in fives or tens? I want it doggy fashion against the cash machine now! <laughs> <laughs> the thing to think about in this state is not Jimmy Hill or David Meller. It's Channel 4 sex programmes. Because the one thing you learn from sex programmes is that experts on sex are, without fail, Quasimodos, right? There they are, saying, well, of course, there's nothing more beautiful than loving, consenting sex between two adult partners. And you always expect them to add, apparently. <laughs> so, I think I shout a disgusting thing out now because I, I once saw Claire Rayner on a sex programme advising couples to do it doggy fashion. Doggy fashion? Surely you mean elephant fashion, Claire? <laughs> My parents might have created the problem in the first place. I've always been hyper-aware of sex since I was a child. I think this is because I had a room next to my parents' bedroom, and my dad just used to make the most abominable noises during sex. <laughs> For years, I thought there was a wounded walrus in my parents' bedroom. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the good sex in the head. We're so outrageous talking about it on the telly guide. <laughs> With me, as ever, is our resident sex expert, Dr. Lindsay Moore. <laughs> Tonight, we're talking about orgasms. Dr. Lindsay. Well, I always think the best thing to do is always make sure you're completely relaxed. And another thing. I always try and look especially sexy for my partner. I always wear split crotch bendies, and I haven't even got a crotch. Lou Reed, the poet of New York. But she never lost her head. Even when she was given head. Hey, given head, that's really rude. <laughs> I know lots of other rude words, too. Bra, pants, knickers, and I saw some prizes once. God, I'm streetwise. Do 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 Hey, that's a rude word, too. Do-do. <laughs> Rock stars always try and make out they're the people most drenched in sexuality, like Prince. Although I think Prince went a bit far with sexy mother f And then he tried to get away with it by calling it sexy MF. Like people are going to say, of course, he means sexy Michael Fish, doesn't he? <laughs> and so many rock stars try really hard to suggest that they are in some way sexually ambivalent. But one of them is just trying too hard. <laughs> Brett Anderson from Suede just so desperately wants you to think that he's gay. Whoops! Ducky! <laughs> Shut that door! It'll ride up with wear hair! What else do they say here? Yeah. Chase me! I'm free! What a gay day! Welcome to going live! Becoming quite familiar, aren't we? You and old Jarvis, you obviously. <laughs> I have to tell you, the other day I had a five hour wait at Victoria Coach Station. Eventually I became so bored I decided to just get on a coach. <laughs> 
check out the action at Lime Street, I thought. <laughs> it has become my unshakable conviction that most lesbians think I'm Chinese. <laughs> I'm sure they do. I'm sure most lesbians think I am Chinese. For example, I'm sitting on the tube, say, and there are a couple of lesbian women sitting opposite me, and I find myself trying to imagine them performing their sapphic rites. <laughs> Later, I may cruise the homeless of Soho once again. Well, hello. <laughs> and what brought you down onto the street? The likes of me, you say? Oh, come, come, that's something of a generalization. Don't worry, studio audience. Edgy silences are meat and drink to me. <laughs> You're merely reminding me of some of my greatest moments. <laughs> In the morning, after particularly late nights, as I wend my way home through the now daylight streets of Soho, some ordinary common people are already on the streets. And sometimes I like to amuse myself by watching them. The other day, for example, I noticed a troop of sixth form boy scouts had got themselves lost in Soho. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that must be terrible. <laughs> I availed myself of a nearby awning and watched their predicament for a few moments until one of their number said, why don't we ask directions of that Chinese gentleman over there? <laughs> I grow weary of you now. Uh, Robert, I haven't told you this so far, but um, I'm planning to do a piece at the end of tonight's show. It's going to be a bit of a departure. Hey, you mean a new type of dick joke? <laughs> No, it's about when someone I was very close to died. Oh. You know, Robert, sometimes life isn't comedy. Sometimes it isn't even tragedy comedy. It's simply tragedy. Yes, there's laughs. Ha 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 ha. Ho 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 ho. Yeah. Hee hee hee. Yeah, but where do we go after that? Nowhere. I've been to the end of the pier and now, hey, I'm diving in. So I'm planning to get in a, a really good director, shoot it on 35mm, should look really classy. And uh, I've asked for the rights to use a particular Eurythmics song on the soundtrack. The point is, all this could cost a bit. So from now on, is it OK if we go easy on the budget? Robert? I mean, it really means a lot to me. No, hey, you know, of course, definitely. Uh, when are you doing this? Please? It's just after the bit you do that begins, another night in on my own. Right. Another night in on my own, OK? And then I shall be doing the end piece of the entire series. I shall be walking over the hot coals of truth without my clown shoes. <laughs> To try and catch a rare glimpse of the nocturnal habits of our wily friend, the urban fox, we've had to put in selfless and painstaking hours of waiting and watching, even though there's never been any foxes in a 20-mile radius of this area ever. As yeah, a con yeah, there she is. She's there. controlled experiment to see whether a fox would appear sooner or later. <laughs> the BBC may want to know where the half a million pounds we've spent in three months filming here has gone. But it's all worth it for that magical moment when, framed in the moonlight... Oh, what's, what's that doing there? What is it? Get, what the f*** is that doing there? Get the dog out of it! Throw a rock at it or something! What the... Oh, she's gone now. Right! Three months' work. Damn it! Three months' my life. Thank you. Came home and there was an answer phone message from Rachel waiting for me. 
And I never more wished that I had total consciousness, you know, a complete God's eye, holistic view of the world. And when I'm trying to work out whether me and her are right for each other, because, like, there's a lilting tone to her voice on the answer phone. And I'm thinking, you know, is that affection? Is it wariness? Or is it just a, a yodeling great grandmother? So I just keep trying to replay and play the message again and again, hoping that eventually I'll have some flash of insight by some grace of God and I'll know whether or not me and Rachel are right for each other. Hello, Rob, this is Rachel. I'm just returning your call. What do you think? <laughs> call, calling you to my bed. Call. <sighs> I can't wait till my life gets legit, you know, cos, uh, gets, you know, regular. Cos a, a picaresque life is full of humiliations, you know, like that time that... You know, you think you're in there and you don't have any uh, Johnnies and everywhere's shut and all the machines are empty and you wait until dawn, but it's a featherlight freeze bank holiday. <laughs> oh, God, there's nothing more humiliating than having to go around someone's house to scrounge a Johnny. Oh, God, <laughs> I'm going to have to do it. I don't know why the young people today complain about using condoms against HIV. <laughs> I wonder if I could borrow Geronimo. <laughs> this was the design to be used again and again, or in my case, once in 1936. Yeah, yeah, sure it was, yeah. Thank you. Oh, God, that was horrible. But it wasn't going to stop me. No way. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm going to have to put my dick where Ted Brewster's dick has been. <laughs> oh, that's horrible, that's disgusting. And I've got to put Geronimo on as well. <laughs> oh, no, it's split. I don't believe it, it's split. Oh, God, what if she's pregnant? Abortions aren't cut and dried. A friend of mine, she had an abortion and... She said it was so clumsily performed that not only was it incredibly painful at the time, but it now means that she can never have children again. I mean, man, what do you say when someone tells you that? You know, anything philosophical would be glib. So I just said, God, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, but you've got to understand I hadn't done that many then. <laughs> I didn't have all the right tools. Some of the tools were a bit rusty. In retrospect, I wouldn't have used the front forks of a bicycle again. <laughs> Ted's going to be really pissed that I've broken it. <laughs> I don't know why, you know, like he was ever going to use it again. Oh, uh, hello. Is Mr Brewster not in? No, I'm sorry, but he sadly passed away. Oh, God, I'm sorry. What, old age, stroke, heart attack? Uh, no, AIDS. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as this is the last show in the present series, would you please welcome our very special guest star, the Queen of Rock and Roll, Miss Susie Quattro, yeah! Thanks for coming on the show. Did you get a, a copy of the song? Yeah, I did. It was uh, Then He Kissed Me, but it's kind of an odd choice, isn't it? Oh, really? Anyway, uh, the idea is that we, we, <laughs> we, we sing this song and then at, at the end of the song, because it's a song about kissing, we, uh, we, we do this little kiss at the end. I mean, <laughs> it's really the director's idea, not mine. <laughs> is that OK? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> now, listen, the, the kiss, it's because of the song, right? Yeah, yeah, we, I go sort of... Uh, we go, and then he kissed me, and then we go into this long clinch, and this is the embarrassing thing. Um, 